often get our cell towers going down. A couple years ago... Existing broadband providers and cellular providers, uh, they can use Kuiper to be able to put a cellular tower in a place that's currently a dead zone, where right now they may not have any other option available to them. And we can go close those gaps in cellular service all over the globe. Well, in many ways, they're emulating what Elon Musk has done with Starlink. In other words, building a constellation of thousands of satellites to offer internet to very low cost terminals spread around the whole world. So they're offering, going to offer service to consumers, they're going to offer services to businesses, um, and they need tens of millions of users to make this business plan work out in, in a way that would be, would move the needle for Amazon. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And lift off. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one, chamber pressure. Starlink has already announced it has about 2 million customers, um, and it's been growing very fast. It's been adding roughly 100,000 customers a month. Uh, and last year they had revenues of something like 1.4 billion dollars so by the time amazon gets their constellation to service it's uh, very much likely that starling will have five plus million subscribers and perhaps five to eight billion dollars of revenue and uh, that's going to be a long road for amazon to get anywhere close to that uh, so they are four or five years behind at least, and although Amazon has enormous resources they can pour into it, what's going to be really critical is how big this market actually turns out to be. Satellite broadband hasn't been that big a market today. Before Starlink got into the business, there were only about three million customers in the whole world using satellite broadband. That number's increased with Starlink, but it's still really unclear whether there are actually tens of millions of users especially if we're talking about services like Starlink that will cost $100 plus in the US. They have a deadline with the SEC that they have to launch half of the satellites by the summer of 2026. Now, it remains to be seen whether they'll meet that because all of their launch providers are running late. Uh, the, those launchers uh, that they're using, other than the one tomorrow, are still to be demonstrated successfully. And, and after that, they'll have to be brought into commercial operation to launch all these satellites. So that summer of 2026 deadline might well slip, perhaps by a year or so, uh, and then completing the system, we're talking about 2028, 2029. They have committed at least $10 billion. And in fact, it will probably be quite a lot more than that because the launches themselves that they've committed to with ULA, with Blue Origin, with Ariane Space, uh, total at least $9 billion just on their own. So we're really talking here about a 15 to $20 billion project to uh, get this constellation up and running and uh, uh, offer service. Well, fundamentally, satellite can reach anywhere. You don't need to be within range of a cell tower or within range of a cable or fiber network. Um, so that's very helpful in certain circumstances. It's very useful for defense forces. It's very useful in the war in Ukraine. We've seen huge uh, amounts of uh, impressive usage by uh, of Starlink uh, by the Ukrainian forces. And it's really, in many people's mind, changed the course of the way that war is being fought. So, so government is an obvious customer. Um, it's obviously also important for uh, disasters, for 
areas that just don't have any communication, um, but it's not necessarily going to ever compete with what you can get from a fiber network. So when you're in a city, a suburb, when you've got fiber running down the street or a 5G tower at the end of your street, you're probably going to be better off sticking with a terrestrial uh, network. And then the question is, how big is the, the last resort market for satellite? And how many of those people can afford to pay for it? Because clearly there are billions of people in developing countries that don't have access to high-speed internet, uh, but most of them are never going to pay for uh, broadband communication. If they, if they don't pay for cellular networks today, then they're very unlikely to need uh, a broadband connection.